Hi, it's Mr. Wasserman, and today we're going to multiply and divide with fractions. We're in our math journals on pages 256 and 257, so let's just jump right in. Burning 100 calories. The table shows about how long it would take to burn 100 calories doing a variety of activities. And we see all the amounts of time are in hours, but they're all represented in fractions. Now before we get any farther into this, I want to remind you that there are 60 minutes in one hour. That's going to be useful information later on. So one hour is the same as 60 minutes. So let's look at the first problem. Jenna burned about 300 calories playing kickball. How many hours did she play? Well, up here in the table, it shows that for 100 calories, you have to play kickball for one-fifth of an hour. So this first problem, 1A, how many hours did she play? Well, if there are three groups of 100 and 300, all I have to do is take the amount of time it takes to burn 100 calories, which is one-fifth hour, and I'm going to multiply it by 3. Now, when I multiply a fraction by a whole number, I'm basically taking that whole number and I'm repeatedly adding the fraction to get my answer. So one-fifth times three is the same as saying one-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-fifth. Now, when I'm adding fractions, I am only looking at the numerator. So one plus one plus one is going to give me an answer of three so one-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-fifth gives me three-fifths. So the first part of that problem is how many hours did she play? Well, she played three-fifths of an hour. Now that's an awkward uh, way of describing time. We usually talk about hours and half or maybe quarter uh, uh, units. We never say three-fifths. So we need to figure out how much time is that. So again, we go back to the idea that there are 60 minutes in one hour. So, in order to figure out how much time one-fifth of an hour is, I need to divide the total number of minutes in an hour, 60, into five groups, a fifth. 60 divided by 5. Now, I'm going to show you the long division steps that I'm going to take. But some of you have already jumped ahead because you know your multiplication tables and you remember that 12 times 5 gives me 60. So that means that every fifth of an hour is the equivalent of 12 minutes. So if I add 1 fifth plus 1 fifth plus 1 fifth, that's the same as saying 12 minutes plus 12 minutes plus 12 minutes. Or 12 times 3. There we go. What's 12 times 3, everybody? Well, that's 36. So that means there are, it takes 36 minutes to burn 300 calories. Now, question 1b asks us, did Jenna play for more or less than 25 minutes? Well, we just showed that it's more. And how would we explain that? Well, when it says explain how you know, they're asking you to use words to describe the, all the scratch work that you just performed up here uh, off the side of your page. So you can say something like this. I know there are 36 minutes, and I'll abbreviate here and there, in three fifths of an hour because. That's an important word right there when you are explaining something because one fifth of sixty minutes equals twelve and twelve times three equals. 36. My writing font size grew and shrunk repeatedly as I 
enlarged and uh, shrunk the, the size of the paper. So that's how we know that uh, three-fifths of an hour is more than 25 minutes because we know that a fifth of an hour is 12 minutes and 12 times 3 is 36. Okay, let's take a look at another problem. We're going to actually jump over to problem number three. Taru burned about a thousand calories downhill skiing before lunch. If she plans to ski for a total of five hours today, how many hours will she ski after lunch? So, thousand calories downhill skiing, five hours total. How many hours will she ski? Okay, so this problem has two parts. One, we have to determine how much time a thousand calories worth of downhill skiing takes, and then we need to subtract that difference from five hours total. Okay, so again, let's look at the table. Downhill skiing, to burn a hundred calories, it would take one-sixth of an hour. How much time is one-sixth of an hour? Well, I'm going to do the same thing I did uh, for problem number one. I'm going to divide 60 into sixths. Now, before we get too far into that problem, some of you have already done the mental math because if I divide 60 minutes by six, you can just see that zero right there. I know that I can get 10 groups of 6 out of 60, or if I divide 60 into 6 groups, there'll be 10 in each group. 10 minutes. Okay? So, I need to figure out how to get 1,000 calories. Okay? So, 1 sixth of an hour equals 100 calories. Okay? So, that means I need to multiply 1 sixth times 10 because a hundred is one-tenth of a thousand. So what's one six times ten? Well, anything times ten is just that number with a zero behind it. And since I am ignoring my denominator, one six times ten is going to give me ten sixths. Ten sixths of an hour. Okay. Now, how much time is that? Well, if we know that there are ten minutes for every sixth of an hour, and there are ten of them, it's just basically 10 times 10 minutes. So each of my sixths, there's 10 sixths. I'm going to multiply that by 10 minute groupings. So that's 100 minutes. So that's the amount of time that Taru spent skiing before lunch. Now we need to subtract that from 5 hours. Well, I can't subtract hours from and minutes without converting one of those two amounts to the same uh, unit, okay? So I'm going to figure out how many minutes there are in five hours, okay? Now I know that there are 60 minutes in one hour, so that means that to get five hours worth of time, I have to multiply 60 minutes times five. Well, I know that six times five is 30, and 60 is just six with a zero behind it, so I'm going to get an answer of 30 with a zero behind it, otherwise known as 300. So there are 300 minutes in five hours. So when I look at what I have uh, left to do, I need to subtract 300 minutes, which is five hours, minus my 100 minutes, which is my breakfast time, okay, or before lunch. And of course, 300 minus 100 is going to give me 200 minutes. Now, how many hours is 200 minutes? Well, now what I need to do is I need to break up 200 into groups of 60. So I'm going to divide 200 60. Okay? Now, with long division, I would ask myself, how many t groups of 60 can I get at 2? Well, that would be 0. So I jump ahead to the second amount. How many groups of 60 can I get out of 20? Well, again, that would be 0. Because 0 uh, times 60 would give me 0. 
So the question now becomes, how many groups of 60 can I get out of 200? Now the best way to think about that is ignore some zeros for just a minute. I'm going to ignore this zero and this zero right here. So I need to ask myself, how many groups of 6 can I get out of 20? Because that's what I was doing there. I was just bringing down my zeros uh, to get to the number 200 but I'm breaking them into groups of 60. So if I skip count by 6, 6, 12, 18, 24, uh, I can get three groups of 6 out of 20. So if I were to skip count by 60s, okay, 60, 120, 180, 240, 240 is too big. So that means what I need to do is get three groups of 6 because... 3 times 6 is 18. Now when I throw that 0 back in, 3 times 60 is going to give me 180. And then when I subtract the difference, I am left with 20. Now 20 seems like a large number. It is. However, compared to my divisor, it's smaller. So that makes it a remainder. So how many hours will Taru need to uh, ski in the after lunch? Well, I'm going to have a remainder here, so I'm going to make it a fractional remainder, 20 sixtieths, 20 sixtieths. So three hours in 20 sixtieths. Now 20 sixtieths, again, is an awkward amount. Three hours in 20 sixtieths. That seems a little unwieldy. So let's change that around. Okay, so again, I'm going to ignore some zeros here for a second. There's a zero here, and there's a zero here. If I uh, convert 2060s to a lower uh, common denominator, I can just chop off the zeros and make it 2 sixths. So 3 hours and 2060s is the same as saying 3 hours and 2 sixths. Okay, I can go even further, and if you guys know your uh, equivalence, 2 6 is the same as saying 1 3rd, so I can say 3 and 1 3rd hours. But since we are dealing with sixths of an hour to begin with, let's just go with this answer here. So, the total amount of hours that Taru will need to ski after lunch is going to be 3 hours and 2 sixths. Okay, and that's how we solve that problem. Lots of little steps, but if you know your multiplication tables, if you know that there are 60 minutes in an hour, you'll get through it. Ask your math teacher if you have questions. Otherwise, we'll talk again soon. Thanks.